On March 20, 1980, there was a 5.2 Richter scale earthquake. And that was the first one underneath Mount St. Helens that gave a hint that this mountain was getting serious. One week later, March 27, my wife's birthday, I'm not sure what the, I don't know what the connection is, but a vent opened up on Mount St. Helens. And this is 250 feet across. By March 29, we had a second vent open up such that both of them on the same day coalesced into one big crater, basically staying the same until the eruption. Underneath, underneath this mountain, between about four and eight miles, there is a one mile diameter um, uh, cylinder, so to speak, of magma under horrendous pressure. And it can't go any place, but they know that it's down there. And that's causing the earthquakes. There are over 3,000 earthquakes from the 20th of March until eruption May 18, that were over 2.0. There were 371 that were over 4.0 on the Richter scale. This mountain really gave a lot of people warning that something was going to happen. This is one of the eruptions on uh, March 30. Steam. 93 eruptions of steam in one day on March 30. It lets you know that it certainly can make steam and it can make ash. So we have ash. We've got some steam. So is this going to be an ash and steam explosion, or is the magma going to find its way up, and is this going to be a magma turning into lava type of explosion? They don't know yet. You are now looking to the east. This is Mount Adams, and here is Mount St. Helens. This area right in here is an interesting place. It's called Goat Rock. You notice, remember the map, it showed it right in front. Goat Rock, after the first quake on March 20, this area of the mountain facing north, and this is north up here, facing north, this area of the mountain started to bulge. It bulged between four and five feet a day. So that at the end, by May 18, it was a 450 foot bulge. This whole thing just bulging out. That gives you a good clue that something's going to happen there. What was occurring is that the magma is actually pushing from four miles or more underneath, is actually pushing the part of the crust right up against the mountain. And something is going to have to give. The mountain continued to spew out both ash and steam until... May 18, 8.32 and 17 seconds, for those who really like to get down. 8.32, 17 seconds, Keith and Dorothy Stoffel are geologists, and they have paid a pilot to take them up and take pictures. The pilot to this day states that it wasn't enough. <laughs> Dorothy Stoffel says she is looking back and she looks at the mountain and it starts to shake like jello. Okay? She starts to shake. And she sees all of this start falling into the crater. All of this is snow. It's all parts of glacier falling into the crater. You've got cracks starting and they're looking at this. Now, she takes another picture. All of this down here that you see is actually all of this. So this has already slid down. All the ice and glacial part is down here. What you see right up here is goat rock. 3.3 billion square yards of the largest uh, known landslide in history. And it's coming right off the mountain. The entire hump of mountain is just sliding right off. There are requests.
suggest that the airplane fly faster. <laughs> you can see you can see part of the vertical stabilizer right here on the plane as the mountain erupts. Now, they were just by the grace of God saved. Had they been any closer, the the just the air impact on this thing would have tipped this thing right out of there. But I'm not sure even now. How many of you are pilots? Some pilots out here? You know what I mean. I, I, my wife and I are pilots, and I, I wouldn't want to be in this turbulence. It is not good. <laughs> so, how it explodes. Now, this mountain explodes into steam and ash. And it exploded with the strength of 20 million tons of TNT. And when it exploded, you had steam underneath. You had water in water form that exploded, and the water was 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit when it hit the outside. It expanded, and it made that explosion. And as some people, I mean, people, everybody can remember essentially where they were that day, except some of you that weren't quite here yet. <laughs> I'd be concerned if you could remember. And so this entire mountain exploded with the fury of 20 million tons of TNT. It sent a plume into the air that was uh, close to 12, 13 miles high. And it had an anvil stretched out that was 45 miles long. This mountain exploded, though, north. It did not explode up. It exploded out and it exploded north. Here's a picture. It's coming this way. It's not going this way. It didn't point up that way. This, this slid off. And all of the goat rocks slid off. Now, Keith Ronholm was in Bear Meadow. And he was taking pictures because he's a enthusiast. And he wanted to get some pictures. And he was more than an enthusiast. He was a professional. And this was 10 seconds after the eruption and Keith knew at that point in time that it was probably a bad time to be taking pictures. <coughs> this is just four seconds later, so it's 14 seconds post uh, eruption, and Keith takes his picture. You'll notice these streaks right in here. These streaks are hunks of glacial ice the size of a small house half the size, some of them, of this church, picked up and thrown out in front of the volcano. Keith Ronholm continued to take pictures. I'm not sure why. 